It's pedal to the metal, keeping on that grind. Gotta keep it moving, never looking behind the stove. It's the blade and the sparks, they gonna fly. There's beauty in the making when you're taking your time. Sure as it beats working nine to five, it's easy when you love it and you're busy living that sharp life. That sharp line. All right. All right, guys. As advertised, we are with a legend in the knife community, okay. Bob Terzuola, the godfather of the tactical knife, the tactical folding knife. And it is an absolute honor to call him a friend and to be able to be in his shop and film right now. So, Bob, I just want you to kind of just walk us through how this all happened from starting in South America, like how you grew up starting in South America till now. OK, well, I can do that. Um, are you prepared for about a two hour video here? Yeah, maybe, we, maybe we, not. We can okay. do that. We'll keep it. We'll keep it short. Um, basically, I got a good background in uh, tools, machines. Uh, materials, different processes like tapping and filing and uh, soldering and welding and so forth at uh, New York University. I got a scholarship to a vocational education program and I graduated with um, a degree in um, basically industrial arts. I uh, went into the Peace Corps, spent uh, a couple of years in Panama, then I spent a year and a half as a Peace Corps trainer and uh, went down to Guatemala. And everybody says, how did you wind up in Guatemala? Basically, I was chasing a girl. Okay, <laughs> that didn't work out, but Guatemala did work out. I worked on a number of programs down there, um, some agricultural programs, education programs. And then um, I was asked by some friends to manage a jade jewelry factory which they were just putting together and having trouble with in terms of um, marketing and uh, techniques. And then nobody really knew how to work the material, but I did. I had been carving jade for um, quite a few years, just as a hobby. So um, I got involved in the jade jewelry factory and the machinery that, uh, that was involved in um, making uh, uh, jade uh, ornaments and uh, different types of, um, uh, you know, uh, jewelry and so forth, uh, was very similar to um, knife making equipment, uh, grinders, polishers, tumblers, and so forth. And I had a uh, good background in using abrasives and diamond and so forth from my jade carving experience. And uh, I got a couple of pieces here. Let me show you. This is... Uh, this is a jade suba that I made for a Japanese sword. This is called uh, mutton fat jade. And That's I beautiful. carved this quite a few years ago. And another little one I've got here is a seahorse. And that's pretty much white jade. I really like uh, the white jade and the mutton fat for carving. Anyway, I was uh, managing the the factory and our next door neighbor was a very interesting man uh, it's a long story and I won't go into it his name was uh, Jim Atwood he was a colonel in the army and he um, had written the definitive book at the time on German edged weapons of World War II and he used to get uh, the American Blade magazine now it's called the Blade magazine but in those days, uh, we're talking um, late 70s, early 80s, it was called the American Blade. And he gave me a couple of copies and he kind of convinced me that I should uh, try my hand at it because I had the equipment there and he was really into knives. And he said, uh, make me a couple of knives and play around and see what you can do. So I did and uh, got involved basically in making uh, hunting knives and then I knew a number of operatives down there who were working with um, with the uh, the Salvadorian army, um, undercover people. I was working with. I, I did some work with um, 
who um, a company called Concessa, which was um, they did kidnap negotiations, they did investigations. It was basically an investigating organization, private. And they asked me to make some knives for them, and I did. And then um, I made friends with a bunch of Marine security guards at the embassy. And they were very interested in knives, of course, so I made a bunch for them, and that kind of snowballed. And that's basically how it got started. Uh, from hunting knives, I went into kind of military, uh, I guess you could call it defensive or tactical knives. And I came up with a model um, that I call the, uh, the Model 30, Battle Guard. And the first two were made for the Soldier of the Year and the non-com of the year at uh, Fort Bragg, Special Forces. And the first two went to those guys. And it became a very popular model, and it was one of the, the more popular models that I made in my entire career. So that gives you, you know, kind of a thumbnail sketch of how things got rolling.